Hey folks, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. In this video, we're going to talk about the S&P E-mini futures contract. Now, most of you know that I trade the S&P E-mini each and every day, and mo many times, multiple times a day. In the past, I had offered a service packaged with other trade alerts and market analysis where I provide the S&P E-mini support and resistance levels each and every morning before the market opens for my members. I get a lot of requests for this exact service or something like it from people all over the place saying, do you offer any kind of analysis for the S&P E-mini futures contract? Most of the time I just decline and I wasn't actively marketing this service for quite a while. And I'm beginning to realize that there's a need out there and there's a want out there or a desire for this service. So I'm trying to gauge the interest and I want to show you my support and resistance levels that I send out each and every morning to subscribers and see if there's an interest for more people that would want this exact service. And if there is, I'm going to create a standalone product for it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So in the morning, before the market opens, I send an email. Looks just like this. Very simple. Not complicated, not fancy. It's just support and resistance. Good morning. The important levels for today are as follows. Right here. Resistance levels and support levels. Now write these down for a second. 2190 didn't come into play the past market day. 2184 it did, 2180, 2176, 2173, 2169, and so on. So those are the levels that went out, you can see here, before the market opened. About 10 minutes before the market opened is about the norm, okay? So now, when we look at those levels on the S&P E-mini, we're looking at a five minute chart right here. So let's start at the bottom, 2169, didn't come into play. Where are we in terms of time? So here's where the market opened at 9.30. So the market opened 9.30 and it went right into the 21.80 level and immediately backed off. That was in the email. Then we got above it and started trading towards the next level, 21.84. The high happened to be 21.83.75, one tick away from the 21.84. And then the market pulled back and you can see the low of this candle was 21.80 on the button. Then we started to get below it and we traded around 2180 for quite some time and then we started to trade away from it to the downside and we got to the 2176 but it traded through it. That happens. We can't be right every single time on every single level. The S&P is going to go where it's going to go if we can identify the support and resistance levels that are likely to work the majority of the time, we're going to have one leg up or be one step ahead of our competition who happens to be all the other traders out there. What these are, are institutional levels. These are the levels where I figure out by various calculations, various methodologies each and every day before the market opens where the most likely area is where the institutions will either sell the market or buy the market. And the institutions are the ones that have the volume to drive the market in one direction or the other. If you trade with the institutions, you can find success. If you trade against the institutions, you won't be in this business very long. So it's all about understanding where the institutions are likely to make they're buying and selling decisions. Let's just go on to look at a couple of the other levels. 2173, you can see here the low of this candle, 2172.50, bounced off of it, went back to the 2176, traded around that level for a while, back down to the 73, traded around that level, back up to the 76, busted through it, and we, we were headed back up towards the 2180 by the time the market closed. And uh, this is the close is at 1600. Right here was the close of the day. This is the aftermarket session. And you can see we didn't quite make it to the 2180 level at the end of the day. But this goes to show you the power of these levels. Now, you can use your own indicators to get an idea of where the market may be headed at any particular minute during the day. But if you had 
an added benefit of a roadmap on where the institutions were likely to have the most likely buying and selling decisions throughout the trading day, this is a decision that you can easily make for yourself. Would it be beneficial to have these support and resistance levels as a guide or a roadmap along with the other indicators you use to trade the market? The question is, is this something that you would want? Is this something that you think can benefit you? Leave me a comment under the video. Send me an email at david at mystrategicforecast.com. I want to know if this is something that is attractive to traders out there. And if it is, I want to offer it to you for a reasonable monthly fee. You know, kind of th the thing where it may be worth a cup of coffee a day is a cup of coffee a day or the price of a cup of coffee a day worth it to have these support and resistance levels so let me know what you think let me know if this is something that you want i'm david frost my strategic forecast we're talking about the s p e-mini futures contract thanks for tuning in folks